Let's prove a quick result about infinite order elements in groups. The result is this. If we've got a group G and an element A in G, which has infinite order, then every power of A must be distinct. So all the powers of A are different. Now recall what it means for an element of a group to have infinite order. It means that the only power of A, which equals the identity, is A to the zero. That's what it means for A to have infinite order. For any element, if you raise it to the power of zero, you get the identity. But for an element of infinite order, zero is the only power which will give us the identity back. Okay, so with that said, how are we gonna prove this? It's pretty straightforward. We'll begin by assuming that a to the power of r equals a to the power of s. Now we're claiming that all the powers of a are distinct. So if we have this equality, that a to the r equals a to the s, then it must follow that r equals s. That would prove our result, and that's precisely the strategy we'll use. So if we can show that these two powers of s being equal implies that the powers are equal, then our result will have been proven. Now because we're talking about groups, of course, we've got inverses which means we can multiply both sides of this equation on the right, let's say, by a to the s inverse. If we do that, then on the left, we have a to the r multiplied by a to the s inverse. And on the right, we would have a to the s times a to the s inverse, but by definition, that's just the identity. And so we're left with this. Now by our exponent laws, a to the r times a to the s inverse is the same as a to the r times a to the negative s, which is the same as a to the r minus s. So this gives us that a to the r minus s equals the identity. Let me try rewriting this so it's a little easier to read. So we have a to the r minus s equals the identity. Again, this is just by our exponent rules. I'll leave a link in the description to my lessons proving those rules. And now we're pretty much done. We have that a to this power of r minus s equals the identity. But we assumed that a was an element of infinite order, which by definition means that the only power of a which equals the identity is zero. So this power, r minus s, must equal zero. Then we simply add s to both sides, and as desired, we get that r equals s. So by assuming that these two powers of a were equal, we were able to show that the powers must be equal. So as desired, distinct powers of a, uh, distinct powers must give us distinct powers of a. So that's it. For a group element of infinite order, all of its powers are distinct. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, and be sure to check out the rest of the lessons in my abstract algebra playlist.